tonight. You know, this is actually a dress that Law and I have had for quite a while. And we've been waiting to wear. And um, Law just was like, he was like, you know what would be perfect for the last, like, for the L.A. premiere? And he said, the, the bear wing. And I was like, oh, my gosh, it is kind of perfect. And although it's not, it's not quite as literal as maybe some of the other things, there's something that still fits into this, like, I don't know, this character that we've created for this press store, whoever she is. I think having a, a really brilliant director, to be honest. I think he's he's um, obviously incredible and a visionary and someone I've wanted to work with for a very long time. So this just felt like the right thing to do together. And um, he just has a very keen understanding of human emotion and, and people. And he knows how to just, I don't know, he knows how to live with characters in a way that I, I, I appreciate and I value. And I think that, I don't know, we... we Everything felt like a, a real collaboration. I think I liked the complication a lot. Uh, you know, um, as an actor, um, the biggest thing, the biggest part of the job is just reading scripts, right? And um, when this one came across my desk, um, it was very apparent to me that this was a special script. Uh, it always so it always starts with that at the bottom at the bottom of you know at the end of the day. It's just Justin Kritzky's his writing, his script. It's a great story with complicated characters dealing with a lot. Well, I think you know the biggest thing that we all kind of realized about this game in particular um, is the isolation. And uh, you know when you're on that side of the net. There's no one else to turn to. And, um, you know, the big part of the reason why Justin started writing this script was because of this encounter that Serena Williams had, this uh, claim that she was, you know, taking coaching during the middle of a match, which is illegal. And so this idea of having the need to communicate dire, dire, desperate things to a person that you can't, uh, and feeling that isolation and everything that's going on in a person's head at that time. And uh, Luca just captured that perfectly. Well, I don't know if I want to take anything of him with me moving forward, um, but I appreciate his stop along the way and my stop and what we had done together. Um, but genuinely, the thing that stuck out most to me and what resonated with me with the character was this idea of a craftsman, of an artist who falls in and out of love with his craft and is so desperately trying to kind of get back to that purity of why he loved it to begin with. And um, I think that was something to me that I always kind of like go through in my own personal kind of journey, you know, as an artist and an actor. And um, it was the thing that ultimately resonated with me and made me want to do this film. Uh, genuinely, she's just like a grounded human being and uh, just a goofball at the end of the day and um, just a lovely human. Well, I mean, I think inevitably any role you play ever, really, there's, there's an aspect of you that comes out in that character. But if there was a character ever that felt, um, you know, when I first read the script that felt so beyond what felt like m me, it was Patrick. And I but th that's the most exciting thing ever. And I have a lot of affection for him. You know, it's like people come out of this movie and they often, you get these kind of extraordinary, like very strong views about, um, you know, Tashi's terrible, Patrick's terrible, Art's a hero. And then the next person will come out and go, Patrick's a hero, Art's awful. And I, I would just put my, uh, my hat in the ring and just say that I think they're all flawed, but they're all beautiful. So um, yeah. So I've got a lot of affinity for them. Well, I'm a great admirer of them both as artists. And, you know, Mike is a phenomenal actor and a great person. And, you know, he was responsible for getting me out of bed on the weekends and doing activities, which otherwise I wouldn't be doing. I'd be quite happy in my room. Um, so I'm very grateful for that. But he's just a terrific artist. And Zendaya, of course, is, is you know, phenomenal and like a force. And so to watch her work every day, both as an actor but also as a producer, these two roles, and she did it, did it with such grace. It's um, very admirable. Yeah, I would I would encourage people to bat for the three of them, and I think ultimately, you know, that they treat each other terribly, but it, but they're all searching for the same thing, which is to reunite. They all want that feeling that they had at the beginning when they first met, which is. And the realization, which is that the three of them need each other. They need to be as a three. And um, so I think that's what it is. That we, we want, you, you sh 
I hope people bat for all three. With us, we're, we're used to the world of being in a band where we can control everything and we're the bosses. You know, working in film, it's interesting and it's, it's fun because we're not the boss. You know, we're working in uh, collaboration and partnership with the director. And with Luca, we first worked with him on Bones and All. We really felt a connection and appreciation of him as a person and as an artist. He asked us if we'd like to do this film. We read the script. He says it's going to be a very fun, sexy movie. And I'd love it if it could be so beat driven that you could dance through the whole film and we make it in your face. And that, that was an interest. We, I don't know that we would have landed on that on our own, but that direction sent us off on a tangent that showed he was willing to go there and try to turn the movie into something different. It was a really rewarding experience for us and like you said, it's a fun movie. You know, it's fun to watch. We're, we're going to sit through it again tonight and see it in front of a room full of people. And it's exciting. Fun and intricate though. Like, I mean, I think that within the music there's a lot of storytelling that's going on beyond just, you know, the rhythm as it were. I honestly think Luke is one of the most sophisticated men I've ever met in terms of what he, you know, the, he can talk about anything as far as I'm concerned with a deep knowledge, so long as it's centered in the arts in one form or the other. But beyond that, he's just a great, loving, intelligent, brilliant storyteller. With a great instinct. Like we, Bones and all, we read the script. What we saw back in the first cut was so much more than just what was on the page. And that's nothing against the script. Same with this film. We read the script, it's a tight, elegant story. Seeing it realized, um, the extra dimension that it takes on, uh, it is fun to witness and be a part of. You know? I think people throw the word visionary around a lot, but in a real way, in terms of, as Trent was mentioning, like the idea of you read a script, you watch a movie, technically it's the same, but what Luke has brought to it is so much. Well, because these three people are very complicated and they're very much fun, and you want to judge them, but you can't resist them. And I try to put the audience in the middle of this triangle, on the court of the court, so that the intensity of their motions are all into the movie. I think, I think she comes with a power that is so strong within herself. And if you add up that volume with the greatness of the character created by Justin Karitskis and her performance, then it becomes like over the roof. I think we all fight one another and try to reconcile with one another and we try to seduce one another and eventually we are messed up people, all of us. And I want the audience to understand that they can really feel everything that is messy about their lives into the screen and have be exhilarated by it. Well, the first sort of kernel of the idea came from um, I happened to be watching the US Open in 2018 and before that I wasn't a big tennis fan or even like a big sports fan. But it was this match between Serena Williams, who's here tonight, and uh, Naomi Osaka. And there was this really controversial call where the umpire said that Serena Williams received uh, coaching from the sidelines. And she got really upset and said, that didn't happen. I would never do that. And um, I had never heard of that rule, but immediately it struck me as really cinematic that you're all alone on your side of the court and there's only one other person who cares as much about what happens to you as you do but you can't talk to them. And so how would you communicate the tension of that situation using film? And that was kind of it. And then from there, I was doing research, but really I was becoming like a massive tennis fan and started watching every match I could get my hands on. The desire to write the movie came from this real desire I had as a fan of tennis, which was that I was thinking, okay, what could I write that would be as good as watching tennis? and what would make watching tennis even better. And for me, the question of what would make watching tennis even better was if I could know exactly what was at stake, like on an emotional, microscopic level for everybody, the players, the coaches, everyone. And uh, if I could just have somebody whispering into my ear like everything that was going on with them in their heads. Uh, and so I always knew that the movie was gonna work like that, you know, uh, because that's what I wanted to watch. Well, Luca would be an incredible choice for any movie, honestly. Um, he's one of the best directors 
in the world. Um, and uh, I feel incredibly grateful and honored that he made this movie part of his filmography. You know, it's such a serious thing. Um, in our first conversation, he said to me, uh, I know next to nothing about tennis, but I know a great deal about desire. And uh, after he said that, I was completely sold. <laughs> a lot of that um, unspoken glances and you know stuff that's communicated between the characters on the court when they can't talk to each other, that was in the script. But obviously, when you're working with people who are at the top of their game, like these actors and like Luca and our DP and you know everybody, um, you find so many uh, little moments that are say everything about a character, you know. And we were discovering stuff like that every day because these guys are so, uh, they were so keyed into who their characters were, but they're also just so talented and, you know, good at what they do. I, I want them to, to feel whatever they want to feel, but I hope that the journey of it is as exciting and unpredictable and dynamic as watching a great tennis match, you know. Um, that's really where it came from for me. I wanted to make a movie that felt like watching a great sports game. Um, so that's that's what I hope they feel. It, it was a unique experience. All of them, you know, Mike, Josh, and Zendaya, they were all incredibly dedicated. And actors have a lot of the same DNA as tennis players. You know, a lot of focus, a lot of determination, a lot of grit. We had a short period of time to make this happen, and they all put in the hard work. Well, Mike had, you know, he, he's, he had the most tennis background. He had played in high school. Um, but he had a, uh, a two-handed backhand, so he had to learn a one-handed backhand. So he had the most, but uh, Zendaya and Mike are very athletic. All of them are. I, I think I'm better than all of them at smashing <laughs> rackets. Um, but they all, they, they, all, they all learned. They all learned. Um, but it's not as easy as it looks to smash a racket. Yes. Josh probably had the most grit at wanting to get it done. Um, well, early on, before we went to Boston for the filming, uh, when I was working with Zendaya here in L.A., um, we went to a couple of college matches. We went to a Pepperdine Arizona State men's match, and we went to a UCLA Pepperdine women's match. And I think Z took in a lot of watching competition and learning and kind of figuring out because she'd watched a lot of tapes. But seeing it live, I think really you know helped her you know start to figure things out a little more. Um, you know, it's funny. It's like you know I have kids. I have three kids, and you know it's it's an interesting story. I'm responsible, you know, it's funny, a lot of people think that I had something to do with the writing, I'm just the tennis guy, you know. And my daughter happened to be working for Amy Pashkel, so she got me and my wife Kim, she got us the gig as the tennis consultant. So that's the, you know, so that, you know, but that's how I was the tennis guy. You wish